right, 11.1. We're going to talk about um, vectors in the plane. So this is pretty straightforward. Most of this is a review of what you've done last year, but just a few reminders. Um, component form of a vector. Let's say I have a vector that is 3, comma, negative 2. As you know, that's just the vector that goes right 3, 1, 2, 3, and down 2. Okay. If I draw this vector right there, it's in standard position. I could draw the same vector. Maybe I want to start it here. It goes right 3 and down 2, and it would end here. It is the same exact vector, standard position, not standard position. This is component form. The other common form is linear combination form. It's called linear combination because it's a linear combination of um, the standard unit vectors. So it would look like 3i minus 2j. The standard unit vectors are the i vector, 1 comma 0. Uh, so 3 times i minus 2 times the standard unit vector 0 comma 1. And as you can see, when you multiply this out, 3 comma 0 minus 0 comma Two, you get the vector three comma negative two. I prefer com, uh, component form, so I will typically use this, but you do have to know both. Okay. Um, now that brings us, oh, there, there's also on page 755, there are some properties of vector operations. They're pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go through them all right now. Again, that's on page 755. I would just take a look at them. And there's a couple of proofs. The proofs are pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, now, the types of questions in the book, they might ask you, they might give you a vector, let's say they give you 2 comma negative 7. In a typical question, they might say, give me a direction, of another vector that's in the same direction, but is a unit vector. Okay, so basically, we have to find out how big this is, and then divide that out. Another question might be something like, give me another vector, so find a vector, in the same direction as um, but that has a magnitude of something else, let's say of 15. Okay, remember, a vector has magnitude and direction. Direction. A scalar simply has magnitude. Okay, but if we want to find another vector in this direction, so in the same direction as this, first thing we do is we have to turn this into a unit vector. Let's strip out whatever length this is. So let's find the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of 2 comma negative 7 would be square root of 2 squared plus negative 7 squared. Okay, 49 plus 4, so that's going to be square root of 53. Okay, so this vector has a magnitude of red 53. If we want to make it a unit vector, we would just have to divide by red 53. So the unit vector would be 2 over red 53, uh, negative 7 over red 53. And we're almost there. There's our unit vector that has this direction. If we now want to have magnitude of 15, we're just going to multiply by 15. So 15 times 2 over red. 53, negative 7 over rad 53, multiply that out, you get 30 over rad 53, comma, 15 times 7, so negative 105 over rad 53, and you can double check on your calculator to make sure that has a magnitude of 15, okay, to match the question. Okay, finally, you might get a question, and these I know you've you probably left these last year, when you have resultant forces or when you have different velocities and you're trying to add and subtract components of the velocities. So if you look at example number eight, you can take a look at it. I'll tell you what it says. It tells you there's a plane uh, flying through the air, initially flying through the air 500 miles per hour, um, and a bearing of 330 degrees. Remember the degrees are measured um, clockwise from the north. So that's going to go this 330 degrees. Okay, so it's going to give you this angle up here would be 30. Okay, But then a wind starts blowing, and the wind is blowing 70 miles per hour. 
Okay. And they give you north 45 degrees east, which means 45 degrees east of north. Okay, so let's take this vector and this vector. And you, what you want is what is the resultant velocity of the plane? So it's flying through the air, this speed in this direction, and then the wind changes its speed and direction. Okay, so we want to find as a vector, but we also want to find the magnitude in miles per hour, how fast is the plane going? So I'm going to take this one. Which is going to be the factor that looks like this. Magnitude of 330. I know that this is 30 degrees here because that was 330. So this is going to be 60 degrees. So this component right here is 330. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not 330. Let me fix that. That is 500. That was 500 miles per hour. So this is going to be 500 cosine 60 and 500 oops, sine of 60. Okay, so this right here in component form would be, that's, in the, that's to the left, so we'll call that negative, negative 500 cosine of 60. Cosine of 60 is one half. In the y direction, we've got 500 times sine of 60, sine 60 is rev 3 over 2. And now I'm going to take the wind. The wind is 45 degrees east of north. Okay, so if that's north, we're going to go 45 degrees this way, which means this is also 45. I'm going to make this one smaller because this magnitude is only 70. So this is going to be positive 70 cosine 45. This is going to be positive 70 sine 45, okay, so if we add these two factors together, component form here is going to be 70 times rad 2 over 2, and then 70 times rad 2 over 2. Okay, adding these together um, and simplifying, so that's going to be negative 250 plus 35 red 2. This is going to be 250 red 3 plus 35 red 2. Okay, and then if you put that in your calculator, you get something like uh, negative 200.5. Um, for 82.5, and if you take the magnitude of that, square root of negative 200.5 squared, I would keep the, the entire number in the calculator for more accuracy, obviously, for 82.5 squared, right, and that comes out to, that comes out to, of 522.5106 miles per hour. And if you wanted a direction, we would have to take this vector and draw it. Um, so next direction, you're going negative 200.5. The y direction, you're going 482.5. We want to find this angle, which would be tan inverse. I just want to go to my calculator. I wouldn't cut these values off. I want to be as accurate as possible. Now, get this angle to be negative 67.435. Okay. And if I want to do the kind of directions they gave us, I'd have to find this angle, which comes out to 22. 0.56 and my direction would be 22.56 degrees. That's going to be west of north. So west of north. 522.5 miles per hour.